vaginal dryness, or painful intercourse? Keep watching as we go over practical tips to increase your vaginal glow up. The health disclaimer goes without saying. Okay, it's not a problem until it's a problem. So please seek medical attention if the problem persists or becomes bothersome. Um, again, you wanna rule out any vaginal infections, you wanna rule out endometriosis, or definitely any underlying conditions with your reproductive organs, and the list goes on. Number one, hydration and diet. So we're always gonna encourage you to increase your fluid intake, make your water fun, add mint leaves, add citrus, grapefruit, add orange slices, whatever it takes, okay? In fruit infused, whatever it takes to get more water on board, and that is a great way to increase your vaginal lubrication and moisture. Diet, diet, diet. <laughs> so in this channel, we're always going to revert back to diet and hydration. So like most illnesses, you can heal from within based on diet alone, okay? So that is a big one. So this case is no different. Um, adjusting your diet to meet your needs. Omega-3 fatty acids added to your diet is a great way to address vaginal dryness or painful intercourse. Okay, so the omega-3 contains high levels of estrogen, which is highly responsible for that WAP. <laughs> this explains why vaginal dryness is common as you age because of the less estrogen production or supplied to that organ, and so hence your vaginal dryness. So estrogen is gonna be a big one and omega-3 fatty acids are a great way to get it through your diet. Now, I like to take a omega-3 fatty acid supplement over the counter just to cover all grounds. You can also increase your omega-3 intake in your diet by consuming more fatty fishes, such as salmon. Also, you can get it through nuts, such as pistachio, peanuts, walnuts, and then eggs, the list goes on or you can take the omega-3 daily supplement like I do. Most people know vitamin E for skin, hair, and nail health, but vitamin E can also be beneficial in increasing vaginal lubrication. Um, you can take it by mouth or take it as a vaginal supplement suppository. Number two, over-the-counter vaginal lubricants or moisturizers. You know about over-the-counter lubricants that are easy to buy, but did you know about the natural oil lubricants that you can use right from home? I like to use coconut oil as a natural vaginal lubricant. It prevents water loss, it aids as an additional barrier in the case if you're having sexual discomfort or painful intercourse, and it soothes and hydrates. You can also use grapeseed oil, jojoba, almond, and olive oil as a natural vaginal lubricant and substitute for the other over-the-counter products. Over-the-counter moisturizers such as Replens or the vitamin E vaginal suppository that we mentioned earlier are a little bit different than your vaginal lubricants. So vaginal lubricants have to be applied right before intercourse. Vaginal moisturizers can be applied about two hours or so before intercourse. And it's gonna come down to that shorter term coverage or that longer term coverage. So your moisturizers are gonna be longer term coverage and kind of helps to restore moisturization. So it's different than the lubrication, which is again, a shorter term fix. Whenever you're considering these oil-based lubricants, remember that it's contraindicated with latex contraception or your condoms because it can break down the barrier and latex decreases your barrier protection when it comes to contraception. So consider that if you're using oil-based lubricants. Number three, a noni steam or a vaginal steam. It's also referred to as a hip bath in the Korean culture. There are a slew of benefits with the vaginal steam, so I would highly recommend a routine vaginal steam but to name a few, you have perfertility, it decreases vaginal infections, and in this case, 
you can use it to treat pelvic pain or sexual, that painful sexual intercourse or vaginal dryness. So it's gonna be a really big one um, as it relates to this topic we're discussing. So it pretty much uses medicinal herbs to steam the vagina. In turn has again, slow little benefits, but it increases and improves circulation. In this case, improving and relieving vaginal dryness and also painful intercourse. So I would highly recommend a routine vaginal steam. Number four, position changes during sexual intercourse. So this is an easy adjustment to addressing sexual painful intercourse or painful vaginal dryness, you name it, during sexual intercourse is just changing the position. So that's another easy fix. Um, oftentimes the pain is caused by, it's cyclical, so right, hormonal during your menstrual period or that cycle. And so you have some days will be better than other days, uh, but definitely position changes would be a great adjustment. Number five, communicating openly about this concern. Okay, so it's gonna be so important for you to be mindful of your body, mindful of how you're feeling, and that includes pain, okay? So you don't have to suffer alone. Mention and talk to your partner openly about it. Also, if there's some other psychosocial concerns or history of abuse or anything of the sorts, consider counseling or therapy. It's also another great way to address some of these concerns as a mind, body, spirit's connected and the mind tells the body what to do. So you can always bring that home and connect the two by communicating, expressing yourself creatively and, and speaking openly about some of these concerns. That does it for this video. Had a little bit of fun here addressing vaginal dryness, also painful intercourse. If you found anything helpful, we would love to hear from you. Put a comment below and tell us what you've tried or if there's anything else, any other secrets that are practical that we can use. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to share as we increase awareness and improve the quality of living. Merci.